Hello. Hello. Hey, sorry for the delay. I had technical difficulties on my side. I think we're still waiting for a few others. Welcome, everybody. Hey, Bartek. So, uh, I guess we'll get started. Uh, so, uh, welcome everyone uh, to the latest meeting of Tag Observability. Um, this is a CNCF event. Uh, the CNCF Code of Conduct applies. Um, please, uh, if you uh, if you feel moved to, uh, there's a link in the chat here uh, for our document. Uh, feel free to sign in, and if anyone has agenda items to add, um, uh, feel free to do so. Is Jennifer on the call? Uh, no. Is anyone uh, here from that has uh, context on the Chaos Engineering uh, Working Group Charter? That looks like the first thing on our agenda for today. Uh, Bartek, I think your mic is. Yeah, should be now. Can you hear me? Yeah, thank you. Okay, so hello everyone. Yeah, so I put it because as I got this context from Slack, our Slack channel and essentially uh, Chaos Engineering, as you might remember, it was part of observability tag. We used to have Chaos Engineering um, projects like Litmus, Chaos Monkey. And uh, anyway, like it was kind of weird because there were there was no better place for for them and now there is um yeah idea of having another charter from that so it will help to focus conversation so that's pretty pretty nice and they ask us to get a feedback um to them so there is a repo there is a proposal so feel free to you know come and suggest uh, you know add a plus one if you agree with that but i think it's a great idea um so yeah that's what i wanted to share really Okay, um, well, if that's it, um, uh, as people are coming in, are there folks that haven't been here before that want to say hi? Okay. Um, oh. Yeah. So, I'll introduce myself real quick. My name is Eric Tice. I work for Wipro Technologies. I lead the uh, um, open source program office consulting and uh, COE uh, around open source technologies. Uh, we are members of CNCF as well as uh, 
Linux Foundation and many other foundations, and I'm here to uh, you know assess some of the new projects and start looking at places where my teams can start to contribute more. Awesome, welcome. Thank you. So uh, from my side, at least it's been, um, I don't know if Bartek can, can, it seems to be feast or famine. Uh, we, we, we came through KubeCon. Uh, today, actually, the TLC meeting, which was an hour ago or would have been, was actually canceled so the TLC could catch up on back business and administrivia. Um, I have a backlog about two pages long of GitHub things to do, um, uh, various PRs and uh, and things like that. Um, so. Uh, I know uh, Alalita uh, just uh, chimed in that she's unable to come today, uh, as is Richie. Uh, so is there anyone, is there anything folks would like to chat about? Um, I could give a couple updates on, on some of that backlog, um, but I don't want to monopolize time. Uh, I'd rather talk last if, if, there's, if there's really anything uh, that other folks want to cover or talk about or... Uh, yeah, this is this is an open floor, right? Uh, I mean, it's on here. It's the last bullet, but I was kind of curious with the uh, I was looking at the agenda from a couple weeks ago um, and I saw the observe Kubernetes project. Um, it doesn't have a ton in it yet, I guess. And so no, was, it doesn't. Yeah, I was kind of curious what the uh, what the motivation was there and like what the goal is. Yeah. I can jump to that then if you like, uh, if there's nothing else, um, my entire family, all four kids and my partner and I were whacked with like a cold. Somebody brought it home and the whole house got it. So I'm about a week behind. I'd hope to roll out at least uh, in broad strokes what it is. Uh, but uh, I started kind of thinking about uh, how could we, the tag have, you know, a project that folks could contribute to uh, around the observation of, you know, Kubernetes and it's, constituent workloads, <laughs> including itself. Um, and so that GitHub org observe dash K8s um, is just a shell home to, to, to prototype some ideas around that. Um, I did manage to secure the IO and dev domains. Um, and uh, so in, the, in, that, in that context, there are two other kind of interested parties, I think. One is the GitOps work group. Uh, and, uh, Back before KubeCon, uh, there was discussion uh, I had raised, uh, you know, with Scott and a couple others there, uh, that it would make a lot of sense to have some sort of open standard, like you know, we have open metrics uh, for uh, uh, metrics, and we have open telemetry, and then we have these you know open protocols that have enabled an ecosystem to thrive, where vendors can take different slants and different different takes at, at you know letting those open standards provide a marketplace right where everyone can can grow and 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 it's been wildly successful um, in this emerging space of GitOps tooling you know many of the observability vendors uh, as well as others uh, you know could take different to, to, could take different shots at how to communicate the, the list of changes that are happening to to production environments or otherwise uh, but there is no real open standard around deployments uh, coming from something like Flux or Argo or Jenkins or whatever, um, GitOps stuff. Uh, so the GitOps working group is sort of interested there, uh, I think. And there's a place where, you know, across tags, the, the GitOps working group is part of the uh, app deploy tag. Uh, so, you know, that would be a cross tag uh, thing that could be done. Uh, that's one element in my backlog. Uh, and then the other, and this is the, that might be relevant for the Observe K8's general organization. Um, not a particular repo within there. Uh, the other is the SIG instrumentation uh, upstream in Kubernetes. You know, if if we start, you know, building out tools in the, in the open here, uh, and it and it, you know, th that that's a natural choice if more instrumentation is needed uh, upstream general generally. Uh, so, <clears throat> so the idea for Observe K eights was, you know, there's a there's a working doc that I need to drop some stuff into and kind of. Curious if others are interested in this too, but um, you know what sorts of tools would make sense in that in that context. And so, for the last couple of weeks or a month, I've been kicking around a, a prototype, um, and I'll have some 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 code up and some readmes and stuff and some pictures uh, in the next week. Um, 
but the the general idea is uh, something that I'm not sure should be called either kube graph uh, or time graph. Uh, but basically, a, a, I'm, I'm prototyping with Neo 4 J uh, because of the the broad set of libraries uh, that that you can use with it. Uh, but uh, imagine something that listens for all CRUD operations to all KRM objects, so all creates, updates, and deletes for all Kubernetes, you know, pods and, and everything else. Uh, with a dynamic, you could you could use dynamic informers, uh, you know, so combined with a mechanism that listens for new kinds of things like CRDs being installed with an operator, uh, being installed to a cluster, and then listen to those events too. And if you have these stream of, you know, CRUD events. Uh, you can put them into a graph uh, and you know start modeling some of the relationships that is the the system of things you know crds that refer to other C crds etc et um, and if you make that graph be able to keep track of all all of those states you know so you have uh, and this is where pictures will help but you build the versioning into the graph so every time an update comes in you know you use copy on write semantics you, you just you make a new, the, the new state of that KRM resource becomes the node in that graph. And then associated with that node is a history of all the previous states. So you can very quickly find the lineage for a thing or otherwise. So, Matt. yes. So, sorry to interrupt you, but no, I'm um, done. That, was it. that, 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 that sounds awesome, but it also sounds like we're jumping immediately into the solution space. No, no, I, 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 I was saying that in this broad observe K8s organization that I'm proposing that we, the tag kind of foster, uh, this is one example of the kind of thing one could implement under that umbrella, right. uh, to, you but know, they, to have they, to have both right. the visibility and, and contribution. I don't want to go any more, into right. any more detail or, or to say that what I just explained with the graph thing, uh, you know, is part and parcel. That's just an example. Right. Uh, so the, the challenge that I see is a attack doesn't own code, and b so we would need to to do it through a you know some project or or SIG or whatever in, in Kubernetes, mm -hmm. but attack doesn't own code by definition, right? And b um, it sounds to me a little bit like we are talking about concrete implementations in, in various details um, without really thinking what do uh, users out there need, what what are the expected UX and, and whatnot. Um, like, let's maybe start there. Let's start uh, mm. with the requirements, with what people really need, because I think most of us, uh, more or less representing vendors, are so far ahead on the bleeding edge with, you know, all kinds of, of fancy things mm. where the majority of users out there, I, I can only imagine, <laughs> just go like, whoa, what's that? I, I want to get the basics right, right? And uh, I, I'm super supportive for what you're saying, but like that sounds to me like very much jumping ahead into the solution space without really exploring the the problem space too much. Maybe I I, I'm I think you're I, I think you're correct. Uh, uh, again, the 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 specific graph example, you, any of us could conjure up, you know, a half a dozen others at at, at will. Uh, what I meant to say is that you know. Similar to how the the app deploy tag spawned the GitOps working group, the GitOps working group uh, met and worked for almost a year uh, and put in place policy and governance for what has now become or what is quickly becoming open GitOps, an actual organization that does own code, but you know with, with a bunch of work done ahead of time around how that's structured. Um, uh, and talking with with some of the members of, of that working group uh, at KubeCon and and previously, I think many you know if we wanted to do something similar here, like have an right. open yeah. observability organization, right? Um, right. Uh, uh, that similarly is not the tag, but as an open organization, but right. the tag can launch in the correct way with all of the governance. Then right. things like I had been describing, uh, you know, there's a there's a fertile ground for that. Uh, where open core nuggets, you know, can be right. can, can be implemented. So I, I be, perhaps put the cart in front of the horse there in terms right, of explaining right. yeah. things. Um, right. But that was kind of the notion of the organization, so that it could foster right. these kinds of things, would, either open standards or would it, interesting projects. Would it make sense to um, 
invite someone from the the uh, GitOps working group over to quickly, if if someone volunteers, I don't know. You, uh, you uh, seem to have better connections to quick, yes, quickly um, just uh, summarize what they are, what they have been uh, doing, how they went about stuff, and and really get an insight there. Because I like I used to do GitOps a year ago, and up until then with WeaveWorks and and whatnot, I I'm I'm a little bit out of the loop. I don't know what the working group is is currently doing, um, but it sounds from what you said that it like went super well, and they have great deliverables and so on. But I, I'd like to have someone here, uh, if someone volunteers, if you know someone that you know we can ask interactively, say like, okay, how did that go? What would you do? differently etc yes so i've been speaking with scott rigby and i think he would be a great candidate as he's kind of spearheaded a lot of the policy and and governance uh and and i think you know there are both collaboration potentials around you know um the two the two tags working together to, to help foster open standards as they emerge uh, but also to model, you know, after them, and I'm, I will extend an invitation to him. Uh, I'm pretty sure Scott would come and, and give an overview of their experience in launching uh, Open GitOps uh, from the working group that was spawned by the tag. Right. That, 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 and I'd also kind of talked uh, with some others on the TOC as well as Chris, and they they concurred that, you know, Chris's uh, specific advice. Uh, 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 yeah, our CTO for, for, for the CNCF was, was in fact to model um, something like observe K8s or, or whatever it might be called uh, after what the GitOps working group has done. So um, this has been slow rolling. And again, um, apologies, it's not documents first. Uh, I'm just now getting back to just a sniffle. <laughs> Um, I guess the main challenge is that the majority of us have not been like yourself involved in all those things, so we don't really share the the same understanding and and insights that you already have. You seem to already you know invested quite a lot, and I'm I'm just trying to understand what's you know what what is it that you're suggesting. I I like the overall idea, but I I really would love to work backwards from you know what what users actually want and need rather than you know we we are all like I'm I'm pretty sure. If you ask Bartek, hey, come up with a solution, he has pretty much all the components. I'm pretty sure he has all of the things together and and can can say this is the best way to do it. Uh, but you know, let's let's maybe start with what is actually needed. What where are people currently and, and what do they need? I think if I would would like to add that, you know, I totally feel Matt's, you know, intention to really like hands-on and just, you know, deploy something and finally show how easy it is for people, right? So I feel like there is opportunity, you know, within our group to really, um, yeah, just just have fun demos going on. And I totally see that we don't want to um, maybe replace the each project's work. We don't want to put them in maybe wrong uh, use case that doesn't. I don't know. Like there are so many things that that we have to be careful with. And ideally, we have demo of everything to to have like an equal fair um you know overview but there is a risk of course but in the same time there is also like this 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 like value incredible value of this kind of tutorial effort um so yeah that's a good question my my thinking my main main kind of uh idea i have right now is that why not collaborating with each of those projects and Right. somehow encourage them to to do those tutorials in a consistent way maybe that's the solution <laughs> uh, i i don't think that like if we want something then we have to sign up for it and deliver it i don't think that we can uh, knock sorry, on the yeah, door of, i, I, I mean the wrong Th has a great community, but you know like and we, we, have, we, we, we have need all, to do yeah. Exactly. We need to we do need our to do. stuff, right? We we yeah. can't yeah. we can ask people to chime in and help us, you know, good practice here or whatever. But that's that's kind of like orthogonal to what I understood from Matt, right? Matt, Matt's what, what I understood from Matt was more like let's create this this kind of like open standard or whatever. Great. But what 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 you are now saying, which which I love, is essentially imagine you take the the use cases that we have in the white paper. And we pick one random one and show how using CNCF components and where there is not one other open source to actually implement that, right? And that could be, I don't know, demo dot, uh, whatever that domain was that, that Matt already had, okay. where, where we can actually say like, look, you know, here is one instance. This is not the only way how to go with it, but this is one instance where you can actually click around and see how it actually implements this use case, right? But we need to own that. We, we can't 
defer or, or ask others like, hey, you know, Cortex, hey, Thanos, would you mind putting that sure. together for us? That doesn't just, work. Just right? double, I, I don't yeah, that. I definitely <laughs> use rock bar. Encourage wouldn't solve the problem. Uh, but I will still work with them because if we create demo right. and uh, we already in tunnels have Catacola tutorials, so we already have some of it, sure. it's kind of waste of time, right? Because we kind of spread the focus as well. So it has to be collaboration. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely agree. Well, I think and, 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 I'm sorry. No, no, I'm just saying I, 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 I did not say or I did not mean to suggest that we should ignore what, what, what the projects are doing and start from scratch. But also we can't just turned around and say like, hey, we would like to see this demo by next Friday, uh, go and, and you know, uh, he, here, deploy it there. We we need to own it. And then we can, you know, in, in certain cases, like Thanos has an awesome community, which is, you know, to a great extent, your, your like you, you did that, Bartek. So there you can benefit from many people who already have done something, you have done cut, cut the coda, et cetera. We can build on something. Others might not have that you know, big of community that, that actually say like, oh yeah, sure, our demos over there. Uh, Jaeger has a wonderful, I, I, I know they have this wonderful hot rod uh, thing, right? There are many, many projects that already have something. We can just build on that or invite people to help, but we need to own that. We, if we want to do that, then we need to say like, okay, we we sign up for that and, and actually integrate or, or, you know, work with folks from, from the various projects. Yeah, that that this gets to kind of, I guess you're doing a better job of explaining uh, this idea uh, than I am for sure. Uh, uh, so, so thank you. I, working backwards, in other words, you know, I, I think one of the things that kept rattling around in my cage and, and has been for the last year is a case study compendium, right? Like not the tag saying this project is that project, but people who use the tools having a place where they can say, this is how I run Thanos. This is how I run Cortex. Here's what it looks like. Um, uh, so, you know, having, you know, it's just like an, like an open, Observe not open observability. That's actually a thing, <laughs> but you know, just having a, some place, um, you know, again, that can't really be the tag. It, it should. It, it needs to be something that we could facilitate the launch of that has its own legs. But ha having a space to 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 have that neutral place to just say, hey, here's here's what's working for me. Here's what's not, and 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 have that be clonable. You know what I mean? So that if somebody were new to all of this open source stuff uh, and, and new to all of these tools, they could they could have a place to to see what worked for other people, not not necessarily do anything the right the right way. So, for example, that graph thing I was yammering on about probably a little early uh, it was me working backwards for wanting to literally use a HoloLens 2 or some AR glasses to visualize networks. Right, like how would I do that? What data do I need? So working backwards from there, oh, maybe a data model like this would look cool. Where would I go find people that might want to work on that with me? Um, some sort of umbrella organization that facilitated that finding of each other, you know, a finding of contributors versus just you know a needle in the GitHub haystack, uh, so to speak. Um, so I think that the governance piece would be sorting out like what are the rules of the road and what's permissible and, and what's not, right? Um, I'm curious what the folks here think. Uh, I'm kind of curious. So, I mean, uh, you mentioned the, uh, or Michael mentioned the um, like hot rod for Jaeger example kind of thing. It sounds like for any of this, we would need, I mean, you're talking about like the tooling that you would use with a sort of uh, abstract project, but it sounds like for whatever tooling you want to like show off or, um, you know, show examples of, that there would need to be some kind of like base project that you know that you're able to add cortex to or you know whatever it is and so i'm curious like it seems before talking about anything else you'd have to talk about like what the um sort of requirements for that kind of project are like what you know is i assume you know is a project that should be able to sort of like exemplify the like use cases of like kubernetes in some kind of way um and like all that kind of stuff and so i'm curious like is there any um you know would you just use a existing you know example project like hot rod or like is that something that you'd be willing to like talk about here of like coming up with a new sort of you know fake uh project that can be used as sort of like a base to show all the rest of this stuff with given that we already have written the, the white paper, I think it would make sense. And also in terms of a consistent story to pick one of like starting with one of those scenarios saying like, okay, let's, you know, pick one uh, that we actually show end to end. But again, it would be like, 
you know, if I look around here on that call, who would actually volunteer to, you know, sit down, uh, meet, I don't know, once a week for for an hour or whatever and actually work on that thing like okay what are the requirements identify components integrate that we need you know there are a number of things we we need to you know actually figure out how, how to do and how to go about it might be that cncf has resources certain vendors might be able to throw in resources but you know someone needs to actually sign up for that I, i'm more than happy to you know, put some some of my cycles in there, but I, I can't do that alone, right? So we would, if we want to go down that route, we would need to at least say like, okay, how do we go about that? Do we start this, whatever we call it, working group or whatever, but we actually think about how to implement it. What do we use as a starting point? Are we going to go bottom up by, you know, identifying what the different projects have and integrate that or top down from our whiteboard, uh, white uh, paper? So that's to me the question, right? Yeah, I mean, just oh. just to throw in one more more name, it would be what I find always very good to use is is Hipster Shop, or how it's now called this Google Cloud demo, um, that could be easily used for a lot of there scenarios. Is, it's actually the the sock shop. We work sock sock shop, mm -hmm. um, and I think he's not on the call today, but. Uh, you know, has uh, uh, forked that and has open telemetry, open telemetrized it. So it, oh, it does now. Um, there is an issue there, but they, I think we forks didn't didn't. Uh, so um, so I think I mean I think... Uh, real quick, just one more thing. Mm -hmm. There we see that there is some need, I think, in the community as a whole for some generic application that is well maintained because that was also the problem with sock shop. shop because it kind of was out of date at some point. So yeah, just throwing that in, not saying that I'm volunteering for that, but yeah. Yeah, um, if I could respond to something uh, that was said earlier that I think is a really uh, a, a really good point. I think Ryan, you were, you were talking about this. Um, you know, when, when I say like the governance and the policy piece, which is actually quite a bit of work that we could, leverage some of the stuff from the GitOps working group, um, you know, consider consider wanting to do a demo of some open source projects and have that be contributed to this, right? There should be, there should likely be a workflow where the people that are interested in that particular thing reach out to those projects, right? Because, so if you look at the TOC call a couple of weeks ago, that they were, we were talking about the issue of the end user technology radars being taken as, you know, in, in how you know if one just looks at those surveys it might say that the cncf says this right versus the cncf end user community similarly were we to do this and just say okay well if somebody wants to to put a demo of how they're using this particular open source project to solve a real problem um cool go ahead and do it right it might seem that that demo speaks for the project, right? So we should have a workflow that goes, that has the person go or the, or the team or whoever's doing this go to that project and make sure that project, you know, give that project input and, 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 and an ability to, to work with that. And in that way, you know, I think consistent with our mission, you know, we can, we can provide a ladder for community members to be involved with projects. Right, and we can educate users with with unbiased, accurate information. Accurate because the project itself was given an opportunity to contribute to this, and that project may not even have even known about this this tag at all, or or, the, or these people. Right, so some of that governance work, um, it's a little bit meta, but I think it's really important. I, I think to nail, and I think Michael, you were getting at that that point as well. Um, so I hope that does that does that make does that make sense? Um, Yeah, yeah. I mean, to, to me, the, the question is, what's the next step, right? I mean, I don't know if we have anything else uh, on, on the agenda for today, but um, if if we want to do that kind of demo bet or whatever we call that, um, then I would be interested, like, right here on the call, like, who, who would come to such a working group meeting and, and potentially invest? Like, I, I as I said, I certainly can invest something but i i don't like yeah so we have three um I, i'm interested i'm, I'm also kind of there's also there's also a cncf lab by the way where we can get some hardware to like run things and house host things as well uh so there are resources like, that we can hard hardware yes 
Yes. I, I love hard work. Uh, no, just kidding. Um, virtual hard Oh, you mean the cloud. Oh, gotcha. mm -hmm. um, so should we should we start a, a little like in the in the uh, Google Docs there? Like um, yeah, there's actually um, I'm scrolling down to get it. There is a doc that you can just put your name into. Uh, I haven't touched it since uh, it's a, it's an almost empty doc, but uh, I'm looking for it can now. You share it. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling it out from a previous meeting. It was basically, we, we, we had some of the stuff in flight and then KubeCon happened. <laughs> um, um, I'll find it in a, in a, in a short minute here. Uh, in any event. So I, I definitely agree that having these examples based on the white paper use cases is a very cool and very important. But I think also something Matt was saying is definitely worth capturing as well. Now, maybe that's not, this isn't quite the right place that the whole idea of capturing what users have done in terms of their blueprints, architectures, whatever, how they're using these things. Uh, I guess the one thing in my head is if we foster something like that, does that then give the impression that it's a CNCF approved like architecture, which is not really the case? Do we need to be careful with anything like that? Because I think they're both important, but very different ways to kind of showcase similar things. So in, in terms of the CNCF and approval, um, I'm going to be really careful that, so, so this tag and, and really in general, the CNCF, you know, uh, uh, has an ethos of not really being a kingmaker. Like we're here to foster an ecosystem and to facilitate projects uh, thriving, plural, uh, without sort of, of picking. So, so, you know, we're not an arbiter or a decider or an approver of anything. Yeah. Um, we need to be careful to not have that perception. Uh, so, so that 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 point is well put, and and it's worth repeating every meeting where this kind of thing is is talked about. But that's on point, yes. And I dropped a link down in the in the doc notes. Thank thank you. So we met. Are you essentially suggesting that whoever is interested in puts their name there, and then like who? Um, in terms of you know arranging a, a meeting or whatever, who who, who drives that? Uh, I'll drive it. Um, yeah, just uh, if if you're interested, throw your name in the doc. That was another recommendation from from Scott um, Rigby over at the GitOps Worker Group was to kind of slow roll things. You know, put up a doc. Those that are interested will emerge, and and we can iterate, and and we can. You know, I think that the. The guidance that I've received from everyone I've talked to is, is to to kind of go slow and take time to do, you know, the, the governance and things before, you know, rushing into, you know, doing uh, just so that just so that it's really clear from the get go that, that things are in water and have had rounds of review and things like that, not only with ourselves, but, you know, with for example, folks that have done it before or with the TOC, if it, if it involves anything that mm. starts to look like a, like a CNCF seal of approval or anything, anything like that. Um, in fact, mm. to, to do anything remotely perceived as that would actually have the impact of, I think, you know, fragmenting and, and splintering, I think, what's a growing community, right? <laughs> so. But it is in our charter, right? As, as far as I remember, we are allowed to have working groups that focus on something specific and deliver something. Uh, yeah, I can share my screen if you like, uh, but yes, it's quite specifically, we, we've got that in there um, uh, uh, on purpose. <laughs> um, so, you know, so uh, this is this is our, our charter document, right? And so, you know, our mission has these main, main points, um, you know, any or all of which we can, we, we, we can, we can engage with. And, and I think what we've been talking about covers a few of these. Uh, and then, you know, we have some example areas in and out of scope, uh, but, but uh, da, 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 uh, uh, yes. So basically in terms of, of governance, this is the CNCF's operating model for, for tags in, in general, like what, what, what they do, um, here we go, uh, what they do and how they work and, and tags uh, specifically in their operating model have, we find it here, uh, working groups. Um, Anyway, the, um, 
it's in here somewhere, but, but the long and short of it, sorry, is that a, a working group is meant to uh, have uh, defined outputs. Uh, they're actually approved by the TOC uh, and the TAG together. So like the TAG proposes them, TOC approves them, and then they're formed. Uh, and they have a chair or chairpersons, uh, ideally two at least, um, uh, for continuity and, and all of that. Uh, and then they're time, time boxed. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, they report back and, and they define their own goals and things like that and have their own meetings. But there is a, um, uh, there is a, a formalized process for that. Ah, here it is. Um, we cover a lot of these, by the way, <laughs> variety of perspectives. Um, I'm sorry. We, uh, Oh, I, we can follow up later, but um, they, they must have factored it out to the working groups. Um, uh, but in any event, I, I don't know if that answers the question. I'll, I'll find a specific link and drop it in the doc to where where uh, where working groups are described. Ken has an interesting question specifically around, um, like I, I don't like the question is you know should we first kind of finalize the, the white paper and then move on to to the demos. Um, like, at least to me, the white paper is not something that's written in stone, like, oh, you know, we did it, it's a PDF, you can print it out, and that's it. But it, we managed the first version out there, but it's a living document, it's on Git, uh, it's on GitHub, and, and you know, you, you, um, you know, we, we can extend, we can uh, change things, we have uh, the, the Chinese Mandarin translation, there. it's like, it's a living document that hopefully um, extends and refines as we learn. From from users and and the community at large. Yeah, um, no, so I, I totally sense, agree. I think yeah. it was just the comment from Bartek that there was some finalizing to be done. So I didn't know whether that meant there was some major oh, things that need to be okay. finalized with it before we start creating demos okay. based on the use cases in it. But maybe I, his finalizing isn't as big as I'm getting in my head. I, Bartek, do you mean that like the official like? PR around around the, the white paper. Or what do you mean with finalizing? Well, he just he just made the comment before he left that he was that finalizing the white, oh, yeah. white paper is on the shoulders of the group. Um, so I don't know what exactly he means by that. Um, but we haven't we haven't officially published it yet, right, Matt? We we haven't like, you know, uh, the TUC hasn't like or, or like whoever officially publishes somewhere on, on a blog post saying like, da da, here is the first iteration of the white paper, right? But we haven't done that yet. Maybe that's the context. Maybe, but yeah, if it's, if it's purely like a process thing of finalizing it and getting it published and things like that, then that's totally fine. I just, the way he wrote that, oh, I wasn't sure if there was like some pieces of work that still need to be done on the white paper and would there feel, therefore impact the demos we're thinking about. I mean, it still seems like right. the it would be. It still seems like there's like a good place at, to start. You know, even the like situations that the the white paper talks about. I feel like it's never easy to create a sandbox project that can like you know satisfy all of those situations so that you can then exemplify the solution. And so I don't know. I feel like there's probably um, plenty of. Uh, stuff that can be done in parallel with the even, you know, yeah, like finalized or not finalized or whatever. I bet a lot of that stuff probably won't change or change too drastically of the, you know, situations where certain technologies uh, become useful. And so we might still be able to kind of work on something related to that while, um, you know, while the uh, finishing touches get put on the white paper. Right. Uh, yeah, so Matt, uh, do you know? Uh, yeah, so so working working groups are 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 spawned and are actually meant to be a mechanism to enable sort of the horizontal scale uh, of the tag. Like they're meant to be asynchronous and uh, in parallel. We we don't have to serialize one thing uh, for another. Uh, uh, and and in fact, we would we would as we grow. Actually, I think you know most tags have multiple tech leads, for example, you know, two, three, four, uh, with, you know, any number of working groups in, 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 in flight, um, at any point in time. Uh, so, yeah, so, so I don't, I don't think there's a, a need to serialize or do one. Um, I think what Bartek might've been referring to was how he's prioritizing some of his time, um, on the white paper. So we had, um, 
it's a long story, uh, but um, uh, you know, a, a whole lot of work has been done there, uh, and and the folks driving that are nearing completion. Uh, I believe some of the final steps for the white paper are uh, review from the TOC. I know Liz had asked for that. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, I think back in uh, September or August in, in one of the TOC meetings. Um, uh, so, but, but again, I think Bartek uh, is is driving that now. Or um, I think Arthur had to go away for a little while uh, uh, from from the project. So, yep. yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Uh, so, like, we have only a few minutes left, and uh, I kind of like uh, don't want to risk to you know let let that now hang there for two weeks and nothing happens. So, sh shall we say like we we meet at some point in time the people who are interested in in a potential demo, I and mean, we can also just you know use the, the Slack channel or whatever, but to get something off the ground to to kind of like brainstorm, you know how we go about it. Um, right. Um, uh, yeah, I can send out a doodle, um, uh, and and we'll just say if you're interested, put your name in that doc, and we'll have a doodle open until what's uh, like Thursday of this week, maybe, or and we'll find a time early next yeah. week um, that works for everybody who who might be interested. Um, yep. The more the merrier, and and yeah, and, the, and then that can go in in parallel. Um, right. Yeah, it's, it's I think very simple, right? If if you're interested, then then you show up, right? You you vote with your feet. If you're if you exactly. want to, then you know, then you will show up, and the, you know we can decide how to go about it. And I mean, this is kind of like I think the first step, right? It's the kind of like internal and informal. Like, is there enough potential for a working group? Right? Is, are there enough people? Is there enough horsepower, right? If, if not, right. Then, and, and, and part of that initial piece is defining what are the art, what are the outputs, what are the goals, what's the time right. frame, right. Up, 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 up. exactly. You know, and then that goes to a formal proposal that can be voted up or down. You know, right. uh, at, at, at the next and, TOC meeting, whatever that is. So I really like I, li I like the project nature of that, right? It's, it has a, a clear ending. It's not like oh yeah, like let's, let's you know. Yeah, and, and we are free to make our own roles as well. So you know. Um, for, for example, we, we said for a while, like if anybody wants to help curate content or do interviews for a YouTube channel or do branding work or, you know, make cool video, and you, you know, there's all manner of creative things that are, that are not engineering per se. Um, uh, and those can be run by working groups. Um, Gibbs Cullen from, from Chronosphere is working on, um, or has been for a while um, and, and has, I think, is approaching critical mass and is working on a write-up on personas. Um, that was another sort of work stream. Uh, so, um. awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to that invite. I'm certainly interested in um, in uh, going going down that route to to see what's what's there. Cool. I think it's also a great learning opportunity, like playing around with stuff and trying it out for real. I think always helps, especially we as vendors. We usually don't actually do that stuff so uh, so that's the reason why right. i'm very interested in that yeah it, it has this this nature we did that once internally for for like engineering and pms and, and empathy customer and empathy workshop saying like okay you're developing that service now you get to use it and build x and um that's fun right if you're the person who who actually builds something and then you have to actually use it to build something that's something completely different and it's it's very nice it's great learning uh so i agree yeah cool all right cool well is there anything else that folks want to chat about if not we, we could we could call it and give some time back to people on uh on a busy tuesday for most i'm guessing uh, i don't want to cut anything off early you know we've got another few minutes so you know anything is fair game yeah, I, I just have a question since I'm new to this. Where is that white paper that's in progress so I can just look at it and see what's written? Is, is it publicly visible or is it something that will be published soon? Just linked it in the chat. Oh, great. Thank you. Good. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's, it's essentially just um, a markdown file on, on GitHub. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, comment on it. Feel free to. For for one of those remaining 
uh, like tasks to do in there. Um, I think it's like they're looking at the ROI of, of observability. Um, that feels like a dense enough topic that it almost, my gut says, put it in a separate doc and link to it. But is that kind of against the, the norms of the white paper? I don't think that there are norms per se. We can do whatever we like, uh, but think of it from a consumption point of view, right? If you are totally. um, someone who Googles and figures out, oh, there is a tag, CNCF tag observability white paper, and you know you probably want to have it like self-contained, right? Like a PDF yeah. that has everything yeah, yeah. in there. Um, but that's why I say, like I, I see it as a living document, right? We can link out to other yeah. things, of course, but we should have, you know, it, it, it's fine to say like, okay, we are still working on that part or whatever, right? But um, I, I would kind of like see it more like, like self -control. Potentially like a summary on the main white paper. Yeah. And then if there's more detail to like get into the, the nitty gritty, put it down somewhere else and link it out. I guess it's always easy to write something long and hard to write something short, right? Yes, especially if you have not so much time then writing something short is very hard. Yeah. Okay, well, have a great day, everybody. Uh, five, four, three, two, one, last call. Thanks for joining and welcome uh, to the folks that are new. And see you in a couple of weeks. Right, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Bye now. Thanks. Bye.